Hey everyone, and welcome to Weed in a Pan. Today, we'll be showing you how to make a cannabis tincture so you can know this too. So what exactly is a cannabis tincture? And how is it different from a cannabis infused alcohol? Well, a tincture is a medicine made by dissolving a drug into alcohol. And in this case, we are dissolving the cannabinoids on the buds into the alcohol. Because of this, technically a cannabis tincture is the same thing as a cannabis infused alcohol. Although with a tincture, we're trying to maximize the amount of cannabinoids in each drop to be used in small doses, as opposed to a cannabis infused alcohol, where each serving is much more than a few drops. Because we're basically making a more concentrated cannabis infused alcohol, the steps will be pretty similar, except we can tweak the recipe now to cram in as much cannabinoids as possible in each drop. First of all, we're going to be using at least double the cannabis when compared with the alcohol recipe. So half an ounce to a full ounce of cannabis per 750 milliliter bottle of alcohol used. Second, because we're more interested in extracting as much of the cannabinoids off the buds than we are the taste of the alcohol, we'll be using the highest percentage of alcohol we can get from a distilled beverage. In my case, I'm going with a Bacardi 151, which has a 75.5% alcohol content. For those thinking, why not just use rubbing alcohol then? Don't do this. We're still going to be consuming this, and most rubbing alcohols are made with isopropyl alcohol, which metabolizes differently from consumable alcohol and can be fatal. First things first, we need to decarboxylate the cannabis. And to do this, we'll first grind it up into a baking sheet. Decarboxylating the cannabis will activate the effects of the cannabinoids by converting the THCA to THC. It is done so by heating up the cannabis. So after grinding it all up, we'll place this in the oven which has been preheated to 250 degrees and we'll let it bake for 30 minutes. After it's done, the ground buds will have a darker baked color and you'll want to let it sit a little to cool down before handling it. After it's cooled, we'll place the decarboxylated cannabis in a jar and then pour in the alcohol. From there, if you have the time to spare, you can just cover it up place it somewhere dark for a week to have the cannabis naturally infuse with the alcohol on its own. Be sure to give it a good shake once a day if you're going with this method. If you're short on time though, there's actually another method available that will infuse the tincture much quicker, and that's to give the glass jar a water bath. Heat will expedite the infusion process down to just 20 minutes. Except instead of bathing the jar in boiling water, you'll need to lower the heat until the water is down to a low simmer. This is because unlike water, which has a boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, alcohol has a lower boiling point of just 173 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the most we should heat up the tincture is 170 degrees to prevent any of the alcohol from burning off. As you can see from the thermometer, this is what a low simmer of 170 degrees looks like. But even if you don't have a cooking thermometer and accidentally burn off a little alcohol, since we're not drinking this for the alcohol content, it shouldn't matter much. Just know that by doing so, it'll make the tincture slightly more concentrated, which will have a stronger effect. You'll need to place something on the bottom of the pot so the jar doesn't have direct contact with the burner. Make sure the water encases the alcohol, but isn't so high that it'll accidentally pour into the jar. And be sure to take the lid off the jar. I also only recommend this if you have an electric burner. I don't recommend using this method with a gas stove, as it's too risky to place something with this high of alcohol content near a fire. 
Alternatively, if you have a sous vide cooker in your kitchen, this is much better to use to ensure that the water stays at exactly 170 degrees. With a sous vide cooker, all you have to do is clip it to the side of a pot, fill it with water, and then set the water temperature to 170 degrees before placing the jar in. Note that water is denser than alcohol, so you need to place something on top of the jar to make sure that it doesn't float. I don't recommend using what I'm using, but it's what I had nearby, so I made it work. Either way, you'll want to heat the tincture uncovered for 20 minutes. After that, we can take it out and just leave it out to cool until it's warm to the touch. Now for both the long method and the quick heating method, the final step is to filter out all the plant material from the tincture. And here you can either use a cheesecloth or a coffee filter. Just place it on a funnel and pour it all through, making sure to squeeze out any alcohol left on the plant material so nothing goes to waste. Depending on how you plan on using the tincture, you either want to put it in a dropper for easy consumption, or in my case, a jar to store for future use, as a cannabis tincture is really useful for a number of cannabis recipes. Just be sure to store this in a dark place to preserve the cannabinoids, and if available, definitely use a tinted glass jar to further protect the tincture from light. And that's it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to check out our other videos to learn more about growing, harvesting, processing, and of course, consuming cannabis.